Mother Imelda Fisher, The Building and Renovation of St. Scholastica Chapel. St. Scholastica Chapel was built in 1925 at the center of the monastery compound between the 1906 convent building and the new St. Scholastica Academy School building. The chapel murals were commissioned in 1934 from the Monastery of Maria Locke in Germany, which was known for Berenice art, a modification of Byzantine art. The sisters specified what they wanted included, and the principal artist, Brother Nacker Beaker, prepared a series of sketches. Then Joseph Steinhage, a young artist who had studied with the monks, brought the sketches to Chicago. Following those sketches, he added some of his own design, set up scaffolding, and engaged in the long and tedious work. The murals were completed in 1937. Restoration of the chapel murals began in 1988 by Joseph Ramirez and Sean Culver. The paintings were cleaned with distilled water, plaster was repaired, and the old plaster altars were removed before the painting could begin. The choir stalls were moved from the front of the chapel to the back, the oak floor was laid, and a new altar and tabernacle were constructed. The restoration of the murals and remodeling of the chapel were completed in four and a half years. In 1993, Sister Vivian Avantic, the community archivist, along with her staff, compiled the Murals of St. Scholastica Chapel Explanations by Mother Imelda Fisher. Mother Imelda, prioress from 1921 to 1941, wrote explanations of each area of St. Scholastica Chapel for the Our Community Monthly Newsletter, beginning in April of 1939. These monthly newsletters were sent to the Benedictine sisters serving in parish schools in Chicago and Colorado. You will hear Mother Imelda's original explanations along with newer material from 1993 throughout this video series. The Glorified Christ. The Glorified Christ holds the central place and occupies the entire section of the main sanctuary wall. When one enters the chapel, one is overawed by the figure of Christ, whose all-seeing eye seems to penetrate one's inmost being. The eyes may be severe, scrutinizing, reproachful, or loving, according as one may feel inwardly conscious of being displeasing or pleasing to the Divine Majesty. Christ glorified is present in each Holy Mass. As such, he is shown in the mural not as suffering, for in his glorified state he can no longer suffer and die. Christ is greatly magnified, and his figure fills most of the space to signify that we are ever approaching toward the fullness of Christ as members of his mystical body. None but the Father knows when that body has come to its fullness. On either side of the figure of Christ, and still comprised within the circle of glory, are the initials IC on the left and XC on the right. Both stand for the name of Christ. The Latin IC means Jesus Christ, and the Greek XC means Lord Christ, both signifying that Jesus is both God and man. The Lamb that was slain. We see the Lamb of God that was sacrificed for us. Right above it, on the opposite sides, are two veiled heads. They are those of a man and a woman, 
covering their faces with their hands. The symbolism is that in the presence of the real sacrifice, the sun and moon withdraw their light and mystically hide their faces. From the altar of sacrifice issue seven streams symbolizing the seven sacraments, which give the life of divine grace to all who are willing to be made the children of God. These streams flow on beneath the entire mural and form the border separating the picture from the base of the wall. By it is symbolized the blood stream that organically unites all the members of the mystical body to its head, which is Jesus Christ. <laughs> 